Hi, this is Julian Stout, licensed personal trainer, licensed PE teacher, world record powerlifter, here to take the fear out of fitness. Now, before we begin, guys, I need y'all to go ahead and click the like button and click the subscribe bell with the notification bell on all, so that way you guys can get every video that I post to you, so that way the algorithm can spread it to everyone else so that they themselves can hear this message. Now, um, in honor of Black History Month, which is ending in a couple of days, I wanted to point out some things about the history of black people and where it has led us to not only in terms of our achievements, but also our shortcomings. Now, in our history, back when we were slaves, we were forced to eat the most undesirable parts of any animal known to man so that we could sustain ourselves. And through our ingenuity and our brilliance, we then did some things with it that ended up possibly tasting good to some people and great to others, right? So fried chicken, chitlins, collard greens, things of that nature, all of these foods, which we we now colloquially call soul food, we have turned our tragedies into triumphs each and every time. And that is part of what makes black history so beautiful because it demonstrates our ingenuity in taking the least desirable situations and making the best of it. Now... With that being said, those particular foods are the precursors or the reasons why that we are in fact suffer from diabetes, heart attack, strokes, um, dementia, you, any ill fit cancer, any ill fated disease that you could think of, it comes from our food and lo and behold, it probably came from the undesirables that we tend to eat on a regular basis. Now, why am I bringing this up? The reason why I'm bringing this up is because we are no longer in that place anymore. And yes, while it is cathartic to turn around and utilize these foods as a reminder of our history and all that we've been through and the things that brought us together, we don't have to necessarily eat these foods on a regular basis anymore, if not at all. Or we can use the better parts of the animals as our ingredients instead. Guys, if you're not African American, I'm not going to ask that you leave this podcast, this YouTube cast per se. I would like for you guys to actually take part in listening and... um soaking in this because this is not a guilt trip i'm not using this platform to you know put people on a guilt trip about being anything other than black but this conversation particularly is for my black brothers and sisters and what what the real problem is is we are at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to our health we are at the bottom of a barrel we are not doing what is necessary for us to actually ascend to be able to see the better part of our 70s, our 80s, our 90s, and beyond. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I brought up a chart um, a while ago about how the United States doesn't exercise, but with further study, it came to point out to me that not only is the United States at the bottom of the barrel, but we as African Americans are at the bottom of the bottom of the barrel. So this, so I'm going to turn around and show you this real quick. I want you to see what I'm seeing. So I'm going to scroll and now we're going to get to black African American only. So the latest data we have is 2018, right? So I want you to look. Black African American only. 
we are right here. By race, we only exercise by 20%. 20.1% of us by race exercises regularly. Whereas if you look at white, 25%. Like I said, we ain't all, we all aren't doing great. But Alaskan native only. Only thing that that is that is it right there. And not by much. So now if we go into Latino who is African American only or African American. 20.1. Now for For full disclosure, I am both African American and Latino due to heritage, right? Um, my mom and my dad are both African African Americans, and but my bloodline has been traced back to the Dominican Republic. So not only am I black, but I'm also Hispanic. The further up the education ladder we go the more likely we are to exercise. But here's where it gets interesting. Black African Americans who are below the poverty line, 13.8% of you exercise regularly. Both meet both the aerobic and, let me go back to the screen, Meet both aerobic activity and muscle strengthening guidelines. 13.8% at when we meet, when we are below or at the poverty line. When we're at the poverty line and double what the poverty line states, we increase up to 15.9. Then when you expand past two to four times the amount, of below above the poverty line we get up to 20.2 and four four times or more than the poverty line we get up to 30 percent whereas if you look at hispanics if you look at white it's not even close So, this of itself is why, here it is, we talk about being, we know we have black excellence, black girl magic, black kings, black queens, and here we are not doing what is necessary for us to represent, which is one of the key words of hip hop, by the way, represent who we're supposed to be. We claim physical prowess when it comes to athletics but we're not exercising make that make sense i don't understand why we have to be the ones that always meet the lower end of the standard we should be excelling and we should be trying to excel in everything that we do and some of us can't let go of the past in order to see the future and what i mean by that is i'm not talking we're not getting political I'm talking about we don't eat this food anymore. We don't have to eat it anymore. There are healthier alternatives to everything that we can eat. And yet we find ourselves still doing the same exact things. And if not worse, because now we're eating fast foods. We're drinking soda out the wazoo because we claim that it's cheaper to eat badly than it is to eat sensibly. So... The reason why I'm saying that is we have an opportunity to save ourselves. And if we don't take this opportunity to save ourselves, then we're at the mercy of those who are in control of what we put into our bodies. And the truth is we don't have to be in, the con in control of anyone. We could be in control of ourselves. And studies have shown that the things that we put into our body affects our mood, affects our behavior, affects our attitudes, affects 
everything about us. The whole saying of you are what you eat is paramount to who we are as people. What we ingest, what we digest mentally and physically becomes us. So if we want to be the best version of ourselves, it is incumbent upon us to start doing the homework and start doing the hard work in order for you and I to be the best you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. Have a nice day and be the best you.